ओके स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ आईसीएसई क्लास सिक्स बायोलॉजी दैट इज द रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच्ड प्रीवियस चैप्टर्स यू कैन चेक द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो सो लेट स्टार्ट so first let us understand what is respiration so respiration is the process of releasing energy by breaking down food needed for various activities of the body see we know that in the food we take many nutrients okay those nutrients are broken down into simpler substances that is carbohydrates are broken down into glucose proteins are broken down into amino acids okay and fats are broken down into fatty acid and glycerol so in that case all those simpler substances mostly glucose okay we will be considering glucose that is the main respiratory component and this glucose is further broken down in order to release energy okay so if the energy is released then that energy will be utilized for various activities in our body okay whatever we do we need energy and that energy comes from respiration now this respiration can be of two types one is aerobic which is the respiration that takes place in the presence of oxygen and another is anaerobic which is the respiration that takes place in the absence of oxygen this aerobic respiration occurs in plants animals okay and anaerobic respiration occurs in certain bacteria yeast etc now let us understand the respiratory system in humans okay so respiratory system in humans let us suppose take an example this is our face region and this is our nose now this is the nasal cavity which is inside our nose the nose has two openings called nostrils okay the nostrils have hairy lining to prevent the dust from reaching the lungs this is important if you look inside the nose you will see that there are many hairy linings okay and that those hairs it prevents the dust from entering the lungs the nasal chamber lining also has mucus which traps germs and dust also you will see that there is a mucus which prevents the germs from entering next is our pharynx now pharynx is the common passage for food and air if you look over here this particular region it is a common passage for both the food and the air the food enters from here and the air enters from here okay so this common passage is known as pharynx next comes the glottis okay glottis is the opening of the larynx now what do we mean by the larynx so you can see where is the larynx and the epiglottis so larynx so larynx is the voice box which contains the ligamentous fold called vocal cords and which vibrates to produce the sound okay so larynx is only our voice box through which the voice is produced okay and whenever the air comes out of the larynx we produces a sound okay now comes the epiglottis this is a very important part epiglottis is a muscular flap which prevents the food from entering the windpipe okay this is what we will see just now it is a muscular flap which you can see over here and it prevents the food from entering the windpipe okay and this is the food pipe okay now let us understand how epiglottis prevents the food from entering the windpipe let us suppose take an example this is a food particle okay and if this food particle goes down from here this is our food pipe and this is our wind pipe so this food has a tendency to go inside the wind pipe okay and this is our epiglottis you can see now what happens if a food reaches here so you can see this epiglottis 
has bed okay it has closed the glottis that is the opening of the windpipe and the food particle will enter the food pipe okay so this is how epiglottis prevents the food from entering the windpipe and whenever uh, by chance if the food gets stuck in the opening of the windpipe then coughing will occur okay and the food will move out of our mouth now let us study the organs or the structures which are present in our respiratory system so first let us draw lungs these are the pair of lungs okay i'm drawing just a rough diagram you can see these are the pair of lungs and below the lungs you can see a structure this is known as diaphragm okay so diaphragm is a muscular sheet which divides the body cavity into thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity thoracic cavity is the chest cavity okay and the abdominal cavity is the cavity which is present below of our body now this diaphragm above the diaphragm the lungs rest on it now if i look into the layers or the membrane covering the lungs you can see there are two membrane the outer layer is called outer pleura and the inner layer is called inner pleura inside this pleural membrane you will see some fluid and this is known as the pleural fluid the purpose of this pleural fluid is to act as a shock absorber and it reduces the friction between the membranes okay now let us consider these are the tube like structures which enter our lungs through the trachea trachea is our windpipe and it enters into the lungs by dividing into two parts that is the bronchi okay this two division of the trachea is known as bronchi and bronchi further divides into smaller branches which we call as bronchioles okay now these bronchioles these bronchioles let us suppose this is a bronchiole at the end of the bronchioles you will see that there are some sac like structure or balloon like structure okay these are known as alveolus now these alveolus or the plural is alveoli it is surrounded or it is supplied with blood vessels okay the red one which you see is the pulmonary vein it carries the blood rich in oxygen from the lungs to the heart okay this is important over here because what happens the blood contains carbon dioxide and we need to take out those carbon dioxide and supply oxygen to the blood so that blood further supplies those oxygenated blood to all our body parts so what happens the oxygenated blood from the lungs okay it is carried away by pulmonary vein and the blue one is known as pulmonary artery it brings the deoxygenated blood to the lungs okay so what happens through the pulmonary artery the deoxygenated blood enters our lungs okay and in alveoli what happens the oxygen enters the blood vessel and the oxygenated blood is transported via the pulmonary vein let us suppose this is an alveolus okay and this is the blood vessel surrounding it so the alveolus it is rich in oxygen because we are inhaling the oxygen rich air and that oxygen rich air enters the alveolus through the trachea and bronchi and bronchioles now these oxygen as the concentration is high it will diffuse into the blood vessel okay and the oxygen will enter in the same way the blood vessel was having carbon dioxide so those carbon dioxide will diffuse inside the alveolus okay and it will be transported out when we exhale so oxygen in the lungs diffuses into the blood and combines with a substance which is known as hemoglobin okay so hemoglobin is a protein which is present in a red blood cell okay and it is also responsible for the red color 
so these hemoglobin it combines with the oxygen and helps in the transport of oxygen okay so this is how gaseous exchange takes place now let us see the phases in respiration so there are two phases the breathing consists of inhalation and exhalation okay and second phase is gaseous transport third phase is cellular respiration so first we breathe in the oxygen rich air those oxygen is transported via the blood to all body parts okay and to all the tissues or cells now there in the cells what happens the oxygen is utilized to break the glucose and to release the energy so this is cellular respiration it is the process of oxidation of glucose in the cells with the release of energy in the form of atp now what is this atp atp stands for adenosine triphosphate you will study about this in higher class it is a molecule which is the energy currency it stores the energy inside it okay so whenever a glucose is broken down to release energy those energy is in the form of atp molecules okay and along with the atp carbon dioxide and water vapor is also released now mechanism of breathing so i divide it into two parts the inhalation and exhalation so during inhalation the ribs move upward and outward okay but in exhalation the ribs move downward and inward during inhalation the volume of chest increases why because if the volume of chest will increase then we will be able to take more and more air inside our lungs and the vice versa happens in exhalation in case of inhalation the diaphragm flattens okay if the diaphragm will flatten then the volume will increase of the chest cavity okay but in case of exhalation the opposite happens and also in case of inhalation the air pressure becomes low so that the outside atmospheric pressure is more than the inside pressure and due to that high pressure outside the air will be able to flow inside okay now let us see some common respiratory diseases so first is asthma it is a chronic lung disease chronic means which persist for a long time and it is characterized by inflammation in the airway okay bronchitis it is the inflammation of the bronchi in the lungs and it is caused by virus third is pneumonia it is the inflammation of the alveoli of lung and it is caused by bacteria streptococcus pneumoniae fourth is tuberculosis it is an infectious disease caused by bacterium okay it is also a bacterial disease and it affects the lung okay the bacteria is mycobacterium tuberculosis fifth is emphysema it is the destruction of the walls of the alveoli so we have seen some common respiratory disease we also studied about the respiratory system in humans the structures involved the gaseous exchange the mechanism of breathing okay so this is how our chapter is completed in the next video we will start a new chapter so thank you for watching we will meet in the next video